space mm-hmm. space luggage. It's great. Um, is the ice cream truck there? Yes, it is. The ice oh my cream gosh. truck is here. I'll have a bomb pop. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 ship it to you. I don't know if it'll be frozen when it gets there, but <laughs> jeez, the stupid ice cream truck is so loud. <laughs> um, yeah, even she'll, in space, you can. She'll put it in a Ziploc baggie, so maybe go. it won't leak everywhere. It'll be like juice; you can just drink it when you get it. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so like, so like, Data basically says to him, "There's no way I'm working with you. I have to preserve the dream of Doctor Sung. He's he's the culmination of one man's life's work. If something happens to Data, it's it's gone forever. There's no backup." Right. There's no I mean, there's lore, but he's he's yeah. evil. So we can't think about him. <laughs> so um, and of course, like Maddox is furious that Data resigned. And he's like, you know, I'll I'll get you yet. My pretty little dog, yeah. too. Like he's, yeah. he's basically like so oh, the wicked witch. wicked witch of the West, you know. Uh, oh. Yeah. Mustache twirling evil. Mm, you yes. Know? yes. Good. Mm, like, I'll is he going to tie Data to the railroad tracks? What's happening? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's just, he's hes like every villain out there. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, it's its pretty, it's pretty wild. Um, so you I, know, this, this sh- mm-hmm. is a, this is a good show. And as we've talked about, this is a good, a great episode of this show that is wonderful. And you, you would think that maybe the outlandish way this guy is a villain and not even like actually a bad he's not bad he's just crazy like not like mad scientist crazy either he's just like i gotta get that android uh, <laughs> he's just you know, one, one track mind would, he's just one track they, yeah, mind focus you would it. think that that would make that that would really pull down this episode or something but it doesn't because no, the rest of it a, is so good. Not at all. Like, because as the episode goes on, you can see Maddox wrestling with the facts that he's faced, that he's forced to confront, how they conflict with his with his master plan. And you see him struggle with that at the end when Picard has him on the stand as a hostile witness. You know, he's starting to feel uncomfortable because the facts are staring him in the face and they've always been there. It's not like Data is suddenly sentient. He's Mm-mm. been sentient all this time. It's just that for Maddox, it's <laughs> it's the, the ice cream truck, I know. Yep. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry, everybody. I live in New York City. It's very loud here. It's um, 9 o'clock, kids. Come on out. It's school <laughs> night. Come on out and get some ice cream. Oh, please. <laughs> the kids in this neighborhood will be up for another two hours. They don't go to bed early. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think yeah. I you know you you said something that I think about is that Data has always been sentient. Like mm-hmm. he you know he doesn't have full on emotions, but he still has uh, wants because he wants he does not want to do this. He wants to learn to play poker with people, things that he likes to do, but he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand how to use. Uh, emotional verbs I guess necessarily like mm-hmm. he might say I would like that because that's what he thinks he's supposed to say but actually that is what he feels but he doesn't know that he's feeling it if that makes any sense at all yeah I um, I, I listened to this um, Star Trek podcast it's uh, it's called Star Trek The Next Conversation and they yeah. I love that show it's so great and it's basically the, the two guys who do it they're reviewing next generation episode by episode and one of the hosts who he's like a lifetime Trek fan he's seen the series like uh, multiple times he basically is convinced that Data actually has emotions this whole time but just doesn't know how to process them doesn't know that they are emotions so he's not emotionless he's just unaware of what emotions are and cannot process them because mm-hmm. there's too many uh, things that happen that you're just like, that's such an emotional thing to do. That's an emotional response. And he's clearly, you know, enjoying this. And he's, you know, he's not a Vulcan where he might slip and show some emotion. He's supposed to be an android without emotions. But we see it throughout the season, of the series, excuse me, how Data really probably mm-hmm. does have emotions. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So now we're back. Next scene, we're back in the JAG office. Uh, we've got Maddox and Picard are there with Philippa. And they're basically arguing about Data being a machine and not being a human. And uh, Picard's like, hey, listen, he's he has rights. And uh, Starfleet has rules. And we don't ignore the rules just because they're inconvenient. And then here's where we get Maddox, who's like, I'm sick of hearing about rights. You know, <laughs> damn it. Rights? Mm -hmm. Who cares about rights? You know, he... my 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 ancestors voted for Trump. I'm so <laughs> sick of hearing about rights. Oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> Sorry. No, Maddox would definitely be a Trump supporter. Oh, but yeah, when he said that, when he was like, <laughs> "Rights, right?" I'm so sick of hearing about rights. I'm like, dude, you're in Starfleet. Like, how can <laughs> you say that? <laughs> yeah. You're in Starfleet. Did you just join? Do you not know? Like, even Picard's like, "What kind of organization do you think you're working for here?" <laughs> crazy um he just did it because he digs the the uniforms yeah he just loves that 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 jumpsuit he was like i gotta join that thing whatever that is because that's cool um mm. and i i i, I want to wear a onesie for work yeah i know why can't and I then wear? he was real disappointed i bet whenever they went to the, like the two-piece with the more oh, mandarin yeah, collar exactly he was like oh that's my one <laughs> um he and, and Maddox then throws out this thing where he says, "Okay, you're saying Data can refuse to work with me. Would you allow the Enterprise computer to refuse a refit?" And Philippa says, "Well, the computer is property. Are you saying that Data is property?" And this is where Maddox says, "Yes." So now it. This takes on a whole nother level where he's saying that Data is not a person. He's not a being that can choose for himself what he wants to do. He is a piece of, of machinery that is owned by Starfleet. And Starfleet can do what they want with him. So Philippa says she'll have to look up the law and figure it out. And uh, that's, what, uh, that's what happens. So... We jump back on the Enterprise. We're in 10 forward. This little going away party for Data. Um, we get the little joke about Data doesn't understand about ripping off the the wrapping paper. Um, <laughs> th this is definitely one of the things that is, to me, um, one of the weird things about Star Trek. So, like, in Star Trek, for example, like, they allegedly don't have money, right? Like, the Federation doesn't yes. use money. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning episode, in the beginning of the episode, when they're playing poker, like, what are they betting with? There's no stakes there. If there's no money behind it, they're just chips. Yeah. Um, and the same thing, like, with the wrapping paper. Oh, I can reuse it. That's great, but we live in a society where you can replicate everything. And it's it's interesting to me that there's still this effort of conservation of, like, oh, I can reuse this. But... It's just one of those little quirks about Star Trek, mm -hmm. which always makes me laugh that, you know, even in, in this episode, Philippa keeps saying, are you going to buy me dinner? And it's like, well, nobody uses money, so no one's buying you anything. <laughs> but OK. <laughs> um, yeah. So there, so in the going away party, we see Data. Um, we see Jordy all sad in the corner and he's like, you're leaving and it's not fair and you're my best friend. And. Jordy's in love with machines and Jordy wants to have <laughs> Oh, sorry. I no, no, no. Jordy wants to have intimate relations the, with Data. The, no, the Enterprise. <laughs> well, yeah. Jo Jordy, Jordy and Data are platonic. Jordy and the Enterprise have a long love affair. I think Jordy, the Enterprise, and Data are in a polyamorous relationship. I do. I you guess. guys are not, you guys are not, not not with me on that one <laughs> i don't know i guess i mean does data plug into the enterprise sometimes i guess yeah he can so yeah i guess so <laughs> well in in uh in the script so in this where they're giving him gifts in the script maddox comes in at the end oh for and real oh yeah yeah and basically is a real asshole and basically <laughs> says you know about uh Talking about data, you know, what, what, what do you think you're going to do now? And he's like, I got a, you know, Maddox says, I got an idea. How about carnival work? They could bill you as a walking encyclopedia. Ask him any question. Ooh. I mean, just total, total a hole. Oh my god! Jeez. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does he does he kick a kitten later on and drown puppies <laughs> too? Like what the heck? 
<laughs> he's taking candy from babies. Yeah, he's for all the real, though. <laughs> Oh my gosh. He's Mr. Burns, you guys. He's going to block out yeah. the sun. Um, okay, so after the going away party, we're back on the Starbase. Now we've got Philippa and Picard and Riker all together. Uh, she says she finds, based on, a st- based on precedent, that Data is the property of Starfleet and he cannot resign. And Picard's like, well, can I challenge this? And she's like, yeah, of course you can challenge it. And he's like, all right, so convene the hearing and I'm challenging it. And she, of course, as established earlier in the episode, has no staff. She's a brand new JAG officer there. And he's like, well, and he even in this part, Joe, he's like, so yes. sorry, Kat, well, surely you have you have uh, rules about this, too. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, was, I said I had the same thing written down. He's like, surely there are regulations that cover this eventuality. <laughs> so angry at her still and so she's like yeah bitch there are rules here's what's gonna happen so she's like i can use serving officers as counsel she tells picard you're the senior officer you're gonna defend Riker is the next in command he's gonna prosecute and Riker at first is like there's no way i i don't think Riker was like, what you talking about, Willis? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. He's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then I, I love this line that she delivers, and she's like, fine. I'll give you my ruling right now. Data is a toaster. Have him report to Starbase 173 for testing by Commander Maddox. And then Riker's like, okay, so I guess I'm prosecuting this. And... Like, I don't understand how she would be like, oh, he's just a toaster, because what if it were a a bomb sniffing dog or something because you wouldn't go oh sorry spot you're a toaster yeah you know because it still has feelings and stuff and data is more has more you know like mental capacity than a puppy he's not as cute as a puppy but you know no, you no, know, it's true though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, he's more than like he may not be flesh and blood and be human or Vulcan or anything. He may be like physically a machine, but mentally he's got he does have some sentience, and he's just I, I don't know. I would ne- I don't know if I would have been able to. Well, I would have tried maybe if I had to argue against him, but I feel like you can't. Because a toaster doesn't talk back and doesn't, you know, toaster can't. Yeah, and I think, that, well, I think it's almost like almost like referencing that if if he was a square box that talked, you, you, you know, obviously since he looks human, it, it, it's a whole other, yeah. you know, it gives you a whole other feeling. I mean, because there's, there's the guys on YouTube, this quarter crew that I watch, they do special effects stuff, and they, they made, they did a motion capture of a person, and they put a robot over it where they were beating it up and I was watching it and I was like I don't like this you know yeah. because it's mm-hmm. it was like, like defenseless but it was it was a joke but just watching that it's like it's a, that's a, that's a little bit different because it's it looks you know looks human and that's the whole that's the whole yeah. point of, of of I think that argument there yeah. yeah the whole sort of like uncanny valley and all that kind of thing and uh, you know and you feel more akin to a robot if it looks like if it has eyes and a mouth, whether it needs all those things or not. But I feel like, you know, you still, people have pets and stuff. I mean, and granted, they have eyes and mouths and things too, but they're not human shaped. So, but you wouldn't just be like, you know, I'm not just going to throw out my dog like I did when my roommate came home a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh well, she no, basically but... so she basically by default she's like he is he's property. So yeah. it's like if you know dog dog is your property, you know cat know. is your property. You know, so that's I think that's I know. And some it's, people it's are... a harsh it's the harsh letter of the law in the twenty fourth century. It's, some people are terrible and they you know they they do mean things to their pets or whatever. And you know generally if she gets mad at me, I'm not gonna like keep bothering her or whatever. Yeah, and I think also, too, uh, you know, I feel like she has a little bit of a choice. And Data wants to have a choice, which is the fact that he understands what a choice is just should automatically. Uh, I don't, I'm sorry. Well, I'm 